we, we're, we're coming into what we like to call the vast international conspiracy part of the evening. And if I were, if I were you, I wouldn't necessarily believe, I mean, anybody who talks like that I always thinks they're a loony, right? I mean, that's just normal. <laughs> and when I looked into this originally, I was not looking for anything like that. I was like everybody else. One hospital had, well, seven hospitals had been closed in Montreal. The hospital that had been closed, the Queen Elizabeth Montreal, was a famous community hospital that had pioneered modern anesthesia, had pioneered laparoscopic surgery, was, you know, like uh, as good as it gets in a small hospital. They were just stunned. How could you close this paragon, right? And I started looking into it and I discovered something. They had closed four hospitals in Toronto the same year. They closed the Calgary General the year after. They closed four hospitals in Halifax and combined them into the Queen Elizabeth II that year. They closed, are you ready for this, 52 hospitals in Saskatchewan in those years. Now, so by this time, you know, I'm a journalist, I'm going, wait a minute, 20% of Canada's hospital beds were closed in one year between 1994 and 1995. It's the biggest bed closure in the history of medicine in the industrialized world. Never been done before, never been done since. We are, if you go online, you discover we're the subject of all these international studies. What happens to a system when you destroy it like that? Oh, we have Canada, let's look. The World Health Organization, the UN, HEN, which is the branch, the European branch of the World Health Organization. They have studies. I've got them at home. <laughs> Canada's so fascinating. Look, they destroyed their own health care system. What happened then? Well, we know what happened then, don't we? Now, I want to see. Now, when I went around, I realized, I thought, well, isn't this provincial? I mean, how come it's across the board in all of Canada? I mean, did, did all the provincial premiers, you know, it was the PQ in Quebec then, did they get together with Ralph Klein and decide to do the same thing? <laughs> we couldn't figure it out. Um, but then I got some proof about it. And let's just look at the next, well, we won't look at the next chart yet, actually. Um, first, I'm going to tell you that it's due to Elizabeth May that I figured this out. Years and years ago, um, how many of you were around for the Paul Martin budget of 1995? Raise hands, yeah. Do you remember what a shock that was? Do you remember how we had destroyed the Conservative Party because of their non-Canadian policies, because of joining NAFTA, because of the GST, because of taking money away from social services and health? Do you remember? Yeah. It was this massive turn to the Liberals, and in they came and we waited for Paul Martin's budget. And it was Brian Mulroney's budget. He sli they slashed everything from the CBC to Via Rail to health to payments to natives to payments to everything. And everybody went, what? He said, oh, well, we we're being fiscally responsible. And he's talked a lot about debt. Remember? The national debt. We have to service the national debt. We have to tighten our belts. Why we had to tighten our belts on health Oh, that's because health spending was skyrocketing. Remember that word? It was spiraling. It was out of control. In Alberta, for example, where Ralph Klein went into this with great will and actually blew up the hospital because so many people were fighting to get it reopened that he had to blow it up. <coughs> Healthcare costs, you know how much they were increasing in the previous 10 years up to the year that uh, they, they closed the hospital? One percent a year, a whole percent a year. That's how they were sp spiraling and skyrocketing. 